Welcome home, Ava General Baptist Church. It's so great to worship with you today. It's so great to, oh man, it's so great to be at home, isn't it? Um, we were, my family and I were gone last week. We were on vacation and, and had a wonderful time, but I found out one thing. I have missed you. <laughs> I have missed you while we we're gone, uh, but we are so glad to be back today um, with you. Today we're going to discuss um, how do we stay focused on God in a distracted world? How do we focus on God in a distracted world? You know, Jesus says in Matthew chapter 21, verse 13, my house is to be a house of prayer, and that's why we are here in a, in a, in a living room set of a home environment, because I've been praying for you this week. I've been praying for God to encourage and equip you with the message that we're going to share today, and I am so thankful and blown away by your generosity. If you would like to give online, you can do so at avageneral.com. Um, Click on the blue online giving tab, and that will direct you through the steps. But as we head into today's message, I want to share a psalm with you. Psalm 95, uh, verse 3 says, For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. We're going to talk about that a little bit today, but I want that to set the tone for the God. When we read Scripture, we truly believe here at Ava General Baptist Church that God inspired the words that are recorded in Scripture, in the Bible. And so when we read about that, we understand that the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The God that we serve is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. And so that's who we worship today. So I want to open us up in prayer of our study today. And so let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father. God, we thank you so much for this time together. I thank you for each and every person that's joining us online today to worship you, to learn about you, and I pray that you would open up our hearts and our minds to understand and to comprehend your word, dear Lord. Thank you so much for generous people who who give financially, give of their time, give of their abilities to the work that you're doing here in Avon, Missouri. And I pray for all those who are joining us online today, no matter where they're joining us online, I am so thankful and humbled, God, that we get to walk through this journey of life with you together with them. God, I pray that you would uh, continue to speak to us through your word today and that you would use it to, uh, we would apply it in our lives with you. And it's in Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Last week, if you joined us last week, um, Bob Comer made a statement. And I'm so thankful for uh, Pastor Bob Comer being able to minister to us last week. Um, he says, Satan does not have to win people to him. Satan just needs to keep people from Jesus Christ. And that's what I want to dig into today. It worked well into what we're talking about today with being distracted. I think being distracted is one of the major tools that Satan uses. Is If he can distract us from Christ, he doesn't need to make us go out and commit some horrible sin. He just needs to distract us from Jesus Christ, distract us from what he's doing. And so over the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about... What are some practical spiritual disciplines that you and I can implement in our lives today in order to stay focused on God, to not be distracted, to waver from Him? And so today, we've been on a family vacation theme. And so today, we're talking about longing for home, coming home from those family vacations. And and when you think about longing for something, what do you long for? What do you long for in this life? Because what you and I desire, what we long for, ultimately determines what we live for. And so it's, it's what drives us in this life. Um, when I think of coming home from vacation, what do I long for? I long for my own bed. I long for uh, my own pillow that I have at home and not something that's in the hotel that we've slept in. And so when you... When you long for home, you long for maybe getting back from a vacation and you're ready just to kind of get back into a routine. Maybe uh, you're a person of routine and you like your um, day-to-day plan and schedule. And so sometimes it's nice to get back home and kind of get back to life as normal. Um, Sometimes it's good to come back home and get back to healthy or well, maybe more healthy eating than what you've ate, what, how you've eaten while you were on your vacation. Uh, maybe a more healthy routine, um, better sleep habits. I know Lindsay and I and the, the girls just went to Michigan. And in northern Michigan, 
um, the, it, we didn't realize how late the, it, the sun sets. And so it stays light for until like 9.45 or so. And that's fine and dandy until you have kids who are not wanting to go to bed because it's still light outside, yes, but it's 10 o'clock. You need to get to bed. And so needless to say, we were longing for home. We were longing to come back and to get back into a routine, although we had fun while we were away. Um, What about you and your daily life? What do you long for each day? Because like we've said, what we long for will impact how you live. What you and I desire each and every day will impact how we live. And so often that you and I long for, and I don't know why we really care about other people's opinion, but we do. We want that approval. We want that affirmation. We want that acceptance. And so oftentimes if we long for the acceptance of others, we ignore God. We ignore what He wants us to do. We ignore how He wants us to live Because we long to have other people approving us in our lives. And that will drive how we live, for better or for worse. Um, Sometimes you and I long for our career so much so that we neglect our family. We neglect relationships. We neglect things in our life, even healthy uh, habits in our life. Because we're trying to climb that career ladder. Sometimes it's maybe our hobbies. That we are striving so much to do our hobbies, to to carve out time, to carve out money in order to do these hobbies that we want to do that we're neglecting and we're distracted from following God. And so today we're going to see how do we kind of refocus. What I love about scripture, and we've been looking at Cornelius' life. Cornelius is found in Acts chapter 10. He's a, he's a, a a person who feared God, who followed God, and he was a man of prayer. And Cornelius was dedicated to God through prayer. And so we're going to be looking at what are some spiritual disciplines that help us focus on God through prayer. Because I know it's so important that you and I be connected with God through prayer. In Hebrews chapter 11, verses 8 through 16... Uh, Hebrews chapter 11 is known as kind of the hall of fame, the hall of faith within scripture. And so Hebrews 11 goes through people of old, of the Old Testament, Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham. These names are found in the Old Testament of people who lived with faith in God. They lived by faith in God. And um, it says, by faith, Abraham obeyed God when he was called out to go to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And when he went out, he did not know where he was going. He was just believing that God who told him to go would show him the place. And he did. By faith, Abraham went to live in the land of promise, as in a foreign land. And he lived in tents with Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him to the same promise. For he was looking forward to a city that has foundations, whose designer and builder is God. So Abraham was going forward and he had faith in God. He was looking forward to a city that was founded by God and whose foundations were designed by God. He was looking for that heavenly dwelling place. It's, and the writer of Hebrews says, All of these people that I've mentioned have died in faith, not having to receive the things promised. Abraham was promised a promised land to live in and he didn't actually see that, but he had faith in that. But having seen them, And greeted them from afar, and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on earth, they knew that they were not made for this earth. For people who speak, thus they make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of that land from which they had gone out, they would have had the opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a place for them. He has prepared for them a city, a dwelling place, and that is heaven. And I want us to understand that heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. And I hope that you're prepared to go there. And that's what we're going to talk about today is how do we focus on our heavenly home, that longing for home that when I seen the GPS that we were following to come home and we saw that checkered flag on the GPS come into view, we knew we were almost home. And we understand that here on this earth, you and I are really just passing through. We're really just longing. Uh, We're aliens in a foreign land and we need to focus on our heavenly home. 
we're longing for somewhere else. And, and you, you may ask the question in your life, why am I I'm not satisfied? Why am I not satisfied in my life right now? And if we're looking at anything else to satisfy us other than God, we're not going to be satisfied. Because we have to understand that we were made for something else. This land that we're living in, this earth that we're living on, is really just... A stopping point. It's just a place that we're passing through. We're traveling on to a different place. We ultimately should not be comfortable here. We should not be satisfied with the things of this world. Because the things of this world are passing away. But the things of heaven are eternal. And those are the things that we're going to get to enjoy forever. You see, our focus on heaven is a key component in our spiritual disciplines. You see, our spiritual disciplines are things that sustain us through the distractions of life so that when life throws us distractions and Satan tries to distract us, these spiritual disciplines are things that can sustain us and help us on our walk with God. And one of the key components of these spiritual disciplines is for you and me to have a focus on heaven. For you and I to take our eyes off of what we see right in front of us and to put our eyes on heaven and on God in heaven and say, Lord, please lead me in this time. It gives us a new perspective on this life. What I love in scripture is that scripture is filled with people who are not perfect. And that gives me hope and that should give you hope too. That some of these heroes of the faith, as you read throughout scripture, you realize they weren't necessarily heroes. They were kind of zeros that God made into heroes because they had faith in him and they followed him. And he did some amazing things through them. But when you look through the pages of scripture, these were not perfect people. And these people in scripture needed to be taught how to live with God. How to live with God as aliens in a foreign land. Just like you and I need to be taught. And one of the things that I find interesting is how many people have trouble with prayer talking about myself as well, included in with that. You know, we have trouble talking with God. It's crazy because we can talk all the day long with somebody else about things that are just passing away. But when it comes to talking with God, it seems like there's a hindrance. And I'm telling you what that hindrance is today. That hindrance is Satan. He does not want you communicating with God. He does not want you to have that connection with God. And today, we look at a passage of Scripture in Matthew chapter 6, where Jesus' disciples had to be taught how to talk with Him. They had to be taught how to pray. And so they asked Jesus, well, how do we pray? And one thing I notice is Jesus starts out with the focus of our prayer. Our focus should be on heaven. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, Jesus says this. Pray then like this. This is how you pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Acknowledging that God the Father is in heaven. He is not on this earth. He's in heaven and he's somewhere else. He's, he's removed from us. So he has a different vantage point from us. And, and so our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. You are holy. Your ho- name is holy. You are separated. You are different from anything we know on this earth. Father, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Do you see that change in focus that Jesus says, okay, you want to know how you pray? This is how you pray. You have a change in your focus. You have a change in what you see, in your perspective that you have. And you bring yourself and you bring your eyes to focus on heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, Jesus says. And forgive us our debts is how we pray. As we also have forgiven our debtors or those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. If you and I, and it is true, you and I are to live heaven on earth. We are to establish God's kingdom here on earth. Why God has chosen to use us in his kingdom work, I don't know. But I'm thankful that he allows us to be involved in his work. And, and so um, we are to live the kingdom of heaven, establishing God's kingdom here on earth, here in Ava, Missouri, here wherever you are joining us. You are to live God's kingdom here on this earth and, and to focus on what's important to his kingdom, which we'll discuss here in a few minutes. If you and I are to live heaven on earth, 
establishing God's kingdom here, then you and I must be focused on heaven while on earth daily. You and I have to be focused on the things of heaven in order to establish God's kingdom here on this earth and to live in his kingdom on this earth. When we refocus ourselves and we look up to heaven, it changes our priorities, doesn't it? It keeps our priorities in check. That way we are focused on the things that God's focused on, not the things that we're, we want to be focused on. You know, because we are prone to wander, aren't we? You and I are prone to wander, prone to wander away from God, prone to wander away from what's important in our lives. We're like shush. Shush is our beagle. And if any of you know and have been around beagles before, you realize they have one thing on their mind, and it's not their mind at all. It's their nose, isn't it? And so our, our dog, Shush, will have his nose to the ground, sniffing out and chasing rabbits. And you could yell his name, you could bring a whole hot plate of food out, and he would not hear you. He would be on that rabbit trail, going wherever it was leading him, and that rabbit's just running in circles out there. Sometimes in this life, you and I get distracted, and we are just running in circles. Where do you find yourself today? Maybe in your marriage? Maybe in raising kids? Maybe in your family life and with your friends? Maybe in your job? You feel yourself, and you're disgusted, and you're distracted because you're running in circles. You've lost your focus. Maybe you're joining us today. And you've never had a focus on God. Because maybe. You were led to believe. That you could not come to God. That you could never be a child of the king. Well I'm here to tell you that's a lie straight from Satan. Jesus Christ died on the cross. So that you could be a child of the king. He died to, to, to forgive you. To set you free. And that's what he wants you to be. Free with him. Living with him. And he wants you to be focused intently on him and his kingdom. And I hope today that that is exactly what you and I do. Is we refocus on God. We refocus on his kingdom. We refocus on his priorities. And not our own sinful fallen priorities in our lives. So the question that we are faced with today is how do you and I long for our future heavenly home like Abraham, Enoch, Noah? How do we long for a place that we've never been to? How do we long for a future heavenly home when we have a distracted present right in front of us? We, we're distracted by so much. How do we keep that focus on God? That's the first thing we have to do. We have to focus on the goal. What is the goal of the kingdom of heaven? It's not some mystery. It's revealed all throughout the word of God. What is God's goal? The goal of the kingdom of heaven is this. It's salvation and growth. That's what God's concerned about. So that's what our focus should be on as well. On his kingdom. His kingdom is all about salvation. That's why Jesus Christ came and died on the cross. That's why he resurrected from the dead. That's why he ascended into heaven. That's why he's coming again one day. For salvation to save souls. He tells us in his word, Jesus does, that my, um, uh, the harvest is great and we have these sheaves of wheat right here. And it's to remind us each and every time that the harvest is out there, Jesus says, but the workers are few. We need more workers. God's depending on you to be his worker in his kingdom to save souls, to go out and to witness to people. To go out and to testify about what God has done in your life. He's all about salvation and he's all about growth. People growing in their relationship with God. When Jesus Christ came to the disciples, he's told them, come, follow me. He didn't say, come, turn around, come to me, meet with me once and learn some things from me and then you're good. He said, come and follow me. That following him is an active verb. It means to get up from where you're going and go and to follow him and until we reach heaven, our heavenly home. We are to focus on the goal, which is salvation and growth. That's why here at Ava General Baptist Church, we are intensely focused on encouraging and equipping the church to encounter the lost. Because we truly believe here 
that God has a plan for each and every one of us and it's to use us into his kingdom's work. And for you and I to be ready for God's kingdom work, we have to be trained up by his word. We have to be trained up by communicating with him in prayer and listening to him. And then as God builds up his church, his body of believers, the community of believers, we are to encounter the lost, those who are far from God. Because truly, those who are far from God aren't as far from God as they think they are. They're just one step away. Just like you and me, who, who have at one time have chosen to surrender to God. That's exactly where they are. And some people have been told a lie by friends, family, um, uh, Satan, in, in, in that they're not welcome in God's kingdom. And I'm wanting to break down that and let them know, no, they are welcome in His kingdom. That's exactly why Jesus Christ came. You see... We are to focus on the goal. When the word goal is used in scripture, as we're going to read here in a few minutes, the word goal in Greek means like the finish line. You think about a track runner running. That track runner doesn't stop until they get to the finish line. Once they cross that finish line, then they can relax. Then they can, they can rest. They can get their rest. But we, and it's the same thing with us in life. And we are not to, to stop working in God's kingdom until we cross that finish line and, and, and live our last day on this life. And then we spend eternity in heaven. That's our time to rest. That's our time to relax. That's our time to worship God in a peaceful state without Satan nipping at our heels. We are to focus on the goal, which is salvation and growth. <clears throat> a few days ago, we were coming back from Michigan. And Lindsay and I really wanted to make it back in one day. It was about a... 13 hour drive or so and so as we're leaving early that morning um, we had one goal and that goal was a checkered flag in Ava Missouri on our GPS I was focused on getting to that goal and I don't know what goes on with kids but when you're traveling with kids it's like those last few hours are horrible especially on a long trip like that and it's like their bladders uh, have to be released every 20 minutes, and I'm like, no, absolutely not. Shut off the water supply. You guys can't drink anything else. I was focused on getting home, and that's what I was, that was my goal. You know, when you and I long for heaven, we are constantly reminded of the grim alternative, which is hell. When you and I focus on the goal of heaven, we have to understand that there's a grim alternative, and that's a place called hell. We discussed this a few weeks ago, that hell was never made for you and I to spend eternity in. God created a hell for Satan and his demons, but for us, he, he came to redeem us. He came to buy us back. He came to, take, came to take us to heaven, and that's the place that we are to go. When you and I long for heaven, we are constantly reminded of the grim alternative, which is hell. Bob Comer last Sunday encouraged all of us to share our faith. We, we attended the summit, the meeting of General Baptist that we go to. It's an annual meeting. We were in Bowling Green, Kentucky this year. There was a guy preaching, and he talked about witnessing. He talked about evangelizing, telling people about Jesus Christ. And he said, I grew up, and there was a guy named Jay, and Jay was an atheist. He said, and he had this relationship with Jay. He would, they would go and play ball together. They would play sports together. They would play tennis together. They would do all these things together. And they would have conversations about God. And for year after year after year, Jay never surrendered his life to Christ. Until one day, after much prayer and much work in God's kingdom, that harvest was reaped. And Jay surrendered his life to Christ. And the guy asked us this one question at the conference. He says, who is your Jay? Who's your J? Who's somebody in your life that is not following Christ? Let me ask you a question. When's the last time you talked with them? When's the last time you prayed with them? When's the last time you prayed for them? When's the last time you shared your faith with them? Because it's so true. When you and I long for heaven and keep heaven as our focus, we're reminded of the grim alternative, which is hell. I was at a funeral yesterday. And I was reminded 
how frail our bodies really are. Scripture says, and God says in his word, that we are not guaranteed tomorrow. Our life is but a, a mist or a vapor, and it's here one day and it vanishes and goes on. Even if we live 70 years on this world, 80, 90 years on this world, our life is but a mist. It's only a little bit. So we don't have all day. We may not have tomorrow. So who's your J? Who's the person you need to pray with? You need to listen to. You need to have a conversation with. You need to share your faith with them. Who is that person in your life that is that's needing that's that's needed in? And um, when we focus on the goal, which is salvation and growth in the kingdom of God, this beautiful picture that Paul paints in Philippians chapter three is what I keep coming back to. In Philippians 3, the Apostle Paul, a follower of Jesus Christ, paints a beautiful picture with his words about how he lives his life. And when I see Paul living his life, it's a life lived intensely for Jesus Christ. And, and in Philippians chapter 3, verse 12, Paul talks about living this life for God. He says, not that I have already obtained perfection or I'm already perfect, but I press on to make it my own. Because Jesus Christ has made me his own. I press on to be more and more like Christ who was perfect, who never sinned. Paul says, I'm not there, but that's what I press on for. That's my goal. I have heaven on my mind. I have Christ on my mind each and every day. I'm focused on him. He says, brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own. But one thing I do consider, and one thing I do constantly is forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I love that word straining. You think of, of a picture of someone stretching across a finish line and they're straining. And when you see a still shot of somebody crossing the finish line, you see every muscle in their body is straining. It's stretching. It's trying to get the most and trying to get to the finish line the fastest and trying to finish the strongest that they can. And Paul says, that's what I'm doing in life. I'm straining forward to what lies ahead. And maybe you have been distracted in your life because you've been so focused on what's in the past that you're forgetting what's in the future. Maybe Satan is hitting you each and every day and reminding you, remember when you did this sin? Remember when you acted like this? Remember when you said this? And you are dwelling and you are, it's draining you. And you're completely distracted. And your eyes are off Christ and your eyes are on your past. Paul says, I've forgotten what lies behind me and I'm straining forward to li what lies ahead of me. This is what it means to have a focus on heaven. This is what it means to long for home. Friend, I want you to pay attention to what Paul says here. I'm straining forward. I'm straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Do you realize that God wants to use you as a worker in his kingdom? Don't let Satan convince you otherwise. Don't let Satan try to convince you that you're not of use in the kingdom of God. He's using peasants like me all over the place. It's amazing that God wants to use us in his kingdom. And Paul says, that's what I'm straining for. That's what I'm focused on. He says, let those of us who are mature think this way. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will, re will reveal that also to you. Only let us hold true to what we have attained. Brothers, join in imitating me. And keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have in us. Paul says, those who are mature, and this is what scripture talks about, salvation and growth. Those who are mature in Christ, think about Christ. Those are mature, who are mature in the faith are constantly Focused on heaven. Jesus says, pray then like this. Each and every day, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is, 
that is on earth as it is in heaven. Are you mature? Some of you would chuckle right now. If you were to ask my wife, she says, no, Tim has some maturing to do. And I'm here to admit to you today, I have maturing to do. Because it's not every moment of every day that I'm completely focused on the things of heaven. I get distracted, just like you get distracted, of the things of this earth. And I, there are times in my life that I need to read Philippians chapter 3 and Paul's words here of thinking about Christ. Thinking about the things ahead and not thinking about the things of this earth. I have some maturing to do because I do not always do this. But in Traverse City, Michigan, I am so thankful that one of these days, that that day I was thinking about Christ. Just a few days ago, we were in Traverse City, Michigan. And as we were up there, my wife called for um, a Chinese restaurant to place an order. Um, the guy starts explaining the part of town that this Chinese restaurant's in. And he says, you know, there's a red door. You go in that red door. It's in that shopping center. And you'll go in and there'll be another red door. And it was just very interesting, the place that he was leading us to. And, I, and w- as we were getting closer, we saw the part of town and... And so we went in, and I didn't know what I was necessarily walking into. And I walk into this restaurant, and there's a very kind man full of smiles behind the counter. And, and as we talked, he shared some things with me. There was a Bible laying there on the counter, and I said, Do you follow Jesus Christ? And this man from China said, What? And I said, do you follow Jesus Christ? And he says, no, 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 I don't follow anything. And I said, okay. And he goes on to tell me, he says, no, I've come to believe and i come to know that men lie. Kings lie. You know, they write certain things down and they just write lies. And so, obviously, he was telling me that the words of Scripture are just written down by people. And people lie. I don't know much about this man's life, but I know in my life, and I'm sure in your life, you've realized and come to this truth too, that people are evil. People lie. And he said, no, no, he said, I believe that there's a higher power, he said, but I don't trust people. He said, I believe that there's something out there, and some people call him Buddha, but he said, I don't even believe in Buddha. He said... But I know there's something out there. Because he said, when I think about my eyeball or my nose and how it works with my body, he said, it points to there's a higher power. And right there in that Chinese restaurant, God had me focused on his kingdom. And his kingdom was this soul right in front of me behind the counter who was telling me, I believe that there's something out there, but I don't know what I shared with that man how I don't necessarily fully trust people or kings either because yes you're right they do lie but I told him I said what I have come to find is I can have a personal relationship with the higher power that you're talking about and his name is Jesus Christ I believe that he's the king of kings and lord of lords and and I, I've experienced him, him personally in my life, and I hope that you can too. And after I got done and I, we were talking, he said, well, thank you very much. You know, the last few days I've been thinking about this man, and I've been praying for him. I've been praying for whoever, and he said, oh, that Bible right there. He said, that Bible is a customer of mine who just came in and left it, and I let them do that. He said, I don't read the Bible. Well, as I left Traverse City, Michigan, I've been praying for that customer to go back in to that Chinese restaurant and to talk with this man. You see, God needs each and every one of us for his kingdom work. He needed me in that restaurant that day to speak with that guy. And he needs that guy to come back in and share his faith with him again. You see how all of this works together? I need you focused on Christ. 
I need you focused on heaven. You need me focused on heaven. And together, when we are focused on heaven, I guarantee that God's going to do some amazing things. But friend, I want you to know that the the distractions that you're facing are happening because you have an enemy that's out for your soul and out for the souls of other people. And I want you to know that you and I have to fight hell each and every day to reach those souls. Who is that guy named Jay in your life? Maybe today is a day that you need to refocus and you need to say, Father in heaven, please help me live your kingdom on this earth. And you need to refocus your eyes on the things above and not on the things of this earth. Let me pray with you. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I thank you so much for this day. I thank you humbly, God, for including us into your kingdom's work. I thank you for bringing us together this day to worship you, God. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would help us focus on you. You would help us live your kingdom on this earth each and every day. That we would look for souls who need to grow in their maturity in you. We need to look for souls who need to be saved that are far from you, but yet only one step back to you. God, I pray that you would show us how to be obedient today. It's in your precious and holy name, Jesus Christ, that we pray. Amen. May God bless you and may he lead you today and this week. And uh, may you follow him obediently as he leads you. Take care.